Hello, my name is Karen Dudley, and I am a cook. I have a little shop in Woodstock called The Kitchen. Yay! <clears throat> Woodstock borders the city and District 6, and you'll find old residential neighborhoods in amongst a whole range of bustling commerce. You will find flower sellers and fish sellers. You will find drug merchants. You will find um, vintage furniture shops and some of the most cutting edge inter interior design. The main road in Woodstock is a cacophony of golden arrow buses and throbbing taxis. And you'll see 19th century facades in semi-decay. And up every narrow, partially cobbled street, the breathtaking view of Table Mountain. We opened our shop in 2009 without much fanfare. Our projections were conservative. Actually, they were bleak. You came to Woodstock to have your car audio fitted or to find some linen or to find an elusive paint color, but you did not come to Woodstock to eat. On top of it, our shop was really small. So we figured we'd just move the kitchen into the shop. People would just have to be gracious with us. They would see things cooking in pots and moving in and out of ovens. But we, we figured they would just have to be gracious with us. And we thought that if they were really nice, they would take their plates to the sink to be washed, like a good guest. We figured that so few people might actually come that we might not even need waitresses. <laughs> waitresses were just a terrifying thought. Um, you know, that was another whole thing. We figured we'd, just, we'd be a food shop rather than a restaurant. And, um, but people would need to feel really comfortable. So I brought all my collection of vintage kitchenalia and this was our guiding principle, that you would only find things in the kitchen that you would find in my own kitchen at home. So no underwhelming muffins and no energy drinks. And we would only make food that was perfectly delicious and pure and unpretentious. So we would offer a range of salads, because we were making those anyway for our catering company, and we would, we would do love sandwiches, and then just the most perfect little treat to finish off. While our first customers were a couple from one of the galleries in the area, she was sad and a little teary, and he, he was kind and attentive, and I realized that this was not the moment to be showing off with all the salads. I knew what I had to do. I made a pot of tea, and I administered a lemon square. <laughs> and this was my epiphany, that I love to serve people. And I could touch people with food. I realized I could disarm with a glossy honey mustard sausage straight from the oven. And I could inspire with a clear day slow. And I could reach straight into the pleasure zone with a sweet Vietnamese iced coffee. And when I was making a love sandwich, there was a moment of quiet regard, a kind of a, kind of a communion between myself and the sandwichee. Well, pretty soon, we were growing a community of people who were hungry for these flavors. Our shop was bustling at lunchtime with people from all over. Ladies from the suburbs were sort of jostling for a place next to Woodstock locals and, and hipsters and tourists. And turns out we would need those waitresses after all just to cope with the lunch rush. And you know, it's an amazing thing. You, it's not hard to teach people the joy of serving. Once people understand that food has the power to touch people, they are become earnest devotees. 
and they trust in the goodness of what we have to offer, and I suppose also in the grace of a place that basically feels like home. In our tiny kitchen, each of my four cooks have taken on something of the art that we create every day. We, we, once I've sort of introduced an idea or a recipe, it becomes their very own. So we talk about Patty's sumac greens and Lucinda's black-eyed beans with Swiss chard and tahini, and people go crazy for Jerry's Cambodian wedding salad. And none of my cooks have trained at culinary school, but each understands their power to touch people profoundly through food. They can literally bring people to tears. And it's tremendously empowering to be able to make something beautiful. Better still is the understanding that it is a collective endeavor, that all the flavors together have the power to wow. Not just us locals, but people from abroad. Food has the power to, to not only, it has the power to, to transcend divisions and transcend, you know, defy categories. There's always a big controversy about what is South African food? Is it Baburti or is it Cook Sisters or Kuss Sisters? Is it Pup and Flace? Is it Burevors? in a culture that has been obsessed with categories and divisions. We say we embrace the whole. In experiencing, in, in exploring a whole diversity of flavor, we are experiencing our own rich, colorful, delicious identity. So food has the power to, to empower people. Food has the power to, to grow a whole community. And it can even make us think differently about who we are. I want to make a love sandwich for you now. I'm singling out a person in the audience that I shall make a love sandwich for. And this is how, this is how I do it. I take an artisanal roll and I slice it nearly all the way through. And then I scoopy, scoopy out the inside of the roll to make space for all the delicious stuff that's going to follow. Then I'll spread on a little bit of our sun-dried tomato pesto, which is made with almonds and rosemary and parmesan. And then I'll spread a little bit of bremelata pesto on the top, a little bit of parsley, lemon, for a sort of a fresh feeling. Then I'll add some slices of, of grilled chicken, a little squirt of our homemade mayonnaise, and then pickles. Yes, pickles. <laughs> some pickles right on there. And then some slices of fresh tomato, because we can't have a dry sandwich, no. Some slices of fresh tomato, a few slices of red onion for zing, and then some love potion. Yes? I need that. You need that. And then some love potion. Then a nice good amount of crispy leaves. And finally, a little bit of dressing, a little drizzle of dressing. Now we've got quite a large sandwich. I'm having to hold down the contents. I'm going to pull the roll over the ingredients and squash it a little bit so that all the flavors become acquainted with each other. <laughs> and the mayonnaise is going into the chicken. <laughs> And the dressing of the leaves are going into the top of the roll. And then with a little benediction, I send my offering on its way.
And now, after all the things we've heard today, I send you all on your way to listen and to serve. Thank you. <laughs>